At Corny and Lynn Lawyers, we have a vision to provide advice and solutions that will deliver just, redemptive and restoring outcomes. Each of our lawyers believes in the call on their lives to contribute to the fabric of this world through strategic counsel, courageous advocacy and clear documentation. This leads to just, redemptive outcomes. Well, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jessica Lipset. I'm a lawyer with Corny and Lind Lawyers and I practice in the area of family law as well as property and commercial law. I'm joined today by one of the senior associates of our firm, Fiona Manderson, who also practices primarily in the area of family law. Uh, first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our firm, Corny and Lind Lawyers are a mid-sized CBD fringe law firm in Brisbane and we specialize in six key areas. These are schools and education, not-for-profits and charity, commercial law, employment and discrimination, estates and elder law, and also family law. I'll give you a brief summary of the topics that will be covered today. We're going to be discussing a general overview of family law matters relating to property settlements. This will include the steps that the court uses to decide property settlements, a few notes on factors which may complicate your matter and when it's absolutely necessary to seek specialist advice, and finally what you can expect from your first meeting with a family lawyer in relation to your property settlement and some tips and tricks around what you need to do to help us get the best outcome for you. Feel free to ask questions throughout today's webinar. If it's a question that we can answer straight away, we will. Otherwise, we will try to come back to it at the end of our session. Now, straight up, I will say that this is a very broad area of law due to the very broad nature of many couples' assets and liabilities. In any one property settlement, we could be dealing with issues relating to property, both real estate and other personal property, superannuation, family trusts, business assets and responsibilities, and other financial arrangements. So you will appreciate that it can be quite a complex area of law. But let's jump straight in to the approach that the court uses to look at the division of marital property. And this was clearly set out for us in the case of Hickey and Hickey. Essentially, in that case, the court set out four clear steps to determine how property will be divided between two parties. Step number one is that we clarify the property that actually exists. We then look at the contributions of the parties to the relationship, both financially and in non-financial ways. We then make adjustments due to any special circumstances, such as future needs. And then the results of those calculations are tested based on whether a just and fair outcome has been reached, having regard to the contributions and the future needs of both parties. Uh, when we say that this is the process that the court uses, this is also the process that family lawyers use when settling a property matter, in the hopes that the parties never have to see the inside of the courtroom. Essentially, family lawyers are working firstly to achieve the best outcome for their clients, but are also remaining conscious of the approach of the court to such matters and considering whether the settlement that is being proposed is actually in line with an order that the court would make if the matter did ever progress that far. Also, when I speak of the court in relation to family law matters, I'm referring to both the family court and the federal circuit court. Both have jurisdiction to deal with family law matters under the Family Law Act. However, each has their own court rules, so procedure between the two can differ. Generally, matters involving complex parenting uh, issues or significant disputes of fact are, des are best dealt with by the family court, which does leave the majority of matters to the Federal Circuit Court. Going back to the four steps that we use to determine how property will be divided, Let's look at each of these a little more closely. So firstly, step number one is clarifying the property that actually exists. Uh, first, at this stage, we should ask ourselves, what is property? Well, property can include almost any material or liquid asset, uh, but it will commonly include houses, cars, furniture, boats, shares, money in the bank, collectibles, and the list could go on. Talk to a lawyer if you're unsure but it's safe to assume that if anything is capable of being owned, it may be considered property for the purpose of your family law matters. 